sentence over two decades. How much time do you think you'd have to spend in prison? Well, for one Illinois official, the answer is far less time than most people thought or the judge even wanted. And investigative reporter Ben Bradley is here now with more on the story, Ben. Ray and Micah, it was a heist of epic proportions carried out little by little over 20 years. A big crime in a small town that went unnoticed for too long. In Ronald Reagan's hometown, a shocking crime committed by a trusted friend. I was shocked. Of course, I was disappointed because those things happened in Chicago, not in Dixon. Mention the name Rita Crunwell around here and you'll get an earful. A lot of her actions really put other people's lives in danger. Well, there were many things over the years that Dixon should have and could have been able to do had she not taken the money, like maintaining the streets. But it wasn't always that way. This person was uh, respected at the time, uh, born and raised in Dixon. No, Rita was once respected, even envied, a world-class horseman with a stable worthy of a queen. And yet, she still found time to keep the books for her hometown. Just looked like it was a shell game, that they just kept moving money around from fun to fun to fun, but you could never find out where that money was actually spent on. Rita Cronwell was Dixon's comptroller. She controlled the public purse strings, and she stole $54 million. My students asked, Kelly Richmond Pope is a DePaul University accounting professor who became so enthralled with the Crunwell caper. So I just didn't understand how a place could miss that amount of money and not know it. She produced a film about it. She completely pulled the wool over her town's eyes. She lived quite a life, totally different life than what she portrayed here. By day, she's wearing municipal clothes, and by night, she's dripping with jewels and furs. World champion, Rita Crunwell. She had this grand, high-stakes horse empire. Years later, what stands out is that the largest municipal fraud happened in a super small town. I mean, and those two things together seem quite odd. That partially explains how Crunwell got away with it for 20 years. This is a strong city that will recover. Siphoning off city money by creating bogus bank accounts made to look like they were for official Dixon business. How did it go unnoticed? She did it herself. She was the one who signed the check. She's the one who picked up the bank statements. She's the one who crafted the budget. She's the one who, you know, took in the bills and sent out the checks. Um, there wasn't enough oversight. There wasn't enough division of duties. They put it entirely on her, and she kept her circle small to down to one. Crunwell didn't necessarily hide her wealth in town. Heck, she stamped her initials on it. All the while telling townsfolk the cash came from her wildly successful horse business. Let's face it, you know, Rita Crunwell uh, lived a life of lies. I understand the city of Dixon was closing its pools because they couldn't afford to operate them. Uh, the defendant built a, a pool complete with a sauna. Jason Wodilla was the former U.S. Marshal in charge of asset forfeiture. Uh, we believe we have located and seized and are liquidating uh, virtually every asset uh, owned by Ms. Crunwell. He still recalls inventorying Crunwell's prized possessions. <laughs> including a $2 million RV, three homes, fur coats, jewels, and sold him $775,000. 300 quarter horses. You know, it's just one of those deals where some of it's just gone. It's been fed into the horses. You know, how do you recover that? She didn't really flash a lot of cash in the city, right? Because she's a city employee. She didn't wear the mink coats, the jewelry. A lot of her uh, wealth was kept in Beloit, some 45 minutes away at the Mary J. Ranch where her boyfriend lived. We're not taking any questions. Do you have anything you want Would to say to the people of Dixon? While Crudwell pled guilty and offered a tear-filled apology in sentencing, she has never spoken publicly about her crime. Don't you think you owe the people of Dixon an apology, Rita? I don't believe she's really that remorseful. It's just something that probably she, her attorney told her to do. Is it your sense that she was remorseful? It is not, actually. 
Jason Modillo met with Cronwell several times in prison as he worked to account for and sell off her assets. She conveyed to me more of a sense of disgust that she had been sentenced to so long. You know, she, she was very uh, visibly uh, shaken by the fact that she was serving a nearly 20 year sentence. In the summer of 2020, WGN Investigates obtained a handwritten letter Cronwell wrote to the judge begging for early release after serving just eight years of her 20-year sentence. With my deteriorating health condition and the danger of the COVID-19 pandemic, I feel like I have been given a death sentence, she wrote. The peak in prison she was assigned to didn't have a significant COVID outbreak, but still she appealed. My crime does not pose a danger to the community. If I am granted home confinement, I will be very low keyed. I am going to do everything possible to make up for my mistakes. The judge said no. Somehow the people of Dixon city. assumed it would be another decade before they heard the name Rita Crunwell again. I didn't think she should be released. I think our community is just ready to, you know, to move on. Then one year later, a late night surprise. Right now, reports suggest that former Dixon Comptroller Rita Crundwell has been released early from the Federal Corrections Institution in downstate Pekin. You may recall she's the former Comptroller of Dixon. Crunwell had only served half her sentence, but the Federal Bureau of Prisons released her to home confinement. It led to a rare public statement from the trial judge who told WGN Investigates the early release of Rita Crunwell from her criminal sentence of 19 years and seven months was not the result of any judicial process, but was a modification of sentence by the Bureau of Prisons. The Bureau of Prisons would not confirm any information about why Cronwell was released or her location. Why was she released? Well, the Bureau of Prisons refuses to say, citing Cronwell's privacy. But sources say it was the CARES Act that made it possible. Portions of the law signed by President Trump allowed for the release of federal inmates to slow the spread of COVID-19 in prisons. She got a huge break and she can thank uh, the origins of the pandemic for that break. Rita may not have many friends left in this area, but she certainly has a lot of family, and that's why we came here looking for her. Sorry to bother you, I'm from WGN. Uh, Sorry about the bad luck. Why do I have bad luck? Because you're a <laughs> me. Well, that's not very nice. What are you doing here? Well, I live here, what are you bothering me for? Get your camera off my face, you is Rita staying with you? Or? Rita who? Who would you like? Your to sister who wrote in a letter to the judge that she was going to stay with you if she was released. Do me a favor and kiss my f***ing No, Rita's relatives weren't much interested in offering an update, but sources say she's been spotted here in Dixon at her brother's home, where a folding table and chair are set up in what would be within reach of an electronic monitor. She also expressed interest in returning to a southern Wisconsin horse farm. All right, let's go. Where she once kept some of her prize winning quarter horses. Hi, sorry to intrude, are you Jim? That's Jim McKillops, Rita Crunwell's longtime boyfriend. Is there anything you can tell us about how she's doing or? I don't know. Ain't got a clue. Because she had originally told the judge that this is where she wanted to come. Well, she didn't, but she's not here and she won't be here. So what's life like for this one-time queen of horses? For the next nine years, she'll have regular check-ins with prison officials, and there are likely limits on her movements. Have you spoken with her since she's been out of prison? No. No? Her and I are very close friends, but mm -hmm. that's yeah. where it is. A decade after her fraud was first exposed, Dixon has recouped most of the money, first through the sale of Crunwell's impressive but ill-gotten gains, and then through a $40 million settlement with the accounting firm that year after year blessed the city's books. Dixon is a very resilient town. Resilient, yes, but also scarred. She took something we can't get back. She took trust. First by betrayal, and now by Comptroller Crunwell's early release. I feel like she had the last laugh. She, she won, you know, I mean, she lived like a queen for 20 plus years and only served eight years. I mean, you do the math, she sort of, she sort of won. 
Rita Crunwell's attorney says his client has a long history of not making any comment on the case, and the same is true today. Now, there is a provision in the law that could require those released early due to COVID concerns to have to return to prison once the pandemic passes. But this week, Attorney General Merrick Garland said he thinks it is, quote, terrible policy to return people to prison who have been released on home confinement. So, Ben, you, you tried to find her. Mm -hmm. Still not quite sure where she is. We know what kind of life she used to be living. Yeah. Is she living a life that's now in hiding? Uh, it's a dramatically different life. Our sources say she is, in fact, in Dixon. Uh, she may mm. be on electronic monitoring. Again, the Bureau of Prisons won't say. She'll have check-ins. She's not, as far as we're told, you know, showing her face much in Dixon because this is a town, keep in mind, that has no love for her, but she, for all practical purposes, has now returned to the scene of the crime. Her brother wasn't very nice.